It's one of the most enigmatic mysteries of well ever. How did such a prehistoric people build Stonehenge? And what is it even for? It's killing me that no one knows. Hey guys, Julia here for D News. From druids to aliens to sacred religious site to burial ground, stories and theories abound for what Stonehenge was actually used for. Some believe it was just a part of a larger Neolithic ritual landscape that included two other sites, one called Avebury and another called Marden Henge. Recently, a Bronze Age skeleton was found near Marden Henge in Wiltshire. Marden Henge is even larger than the other, more famous Henge. The 4,000-year-old teenager was buried with an amber necklace, and near the body were numerous other artifacts like blades, pottery, and jewelry. Maybe this find will give researchers a clue into the life of those who built these sacred sites. Dental examinations could reveal diet, and these artifacts could hint at their culture and who was it that built such massive monuments. The University of Reading headed the dig, which researchers hope would shed some light on the mysteries of Stonehenge. And one of the researchers wonders whether Stonehenge, Martinhenge, and Avebury competed against each other or were used for different rituals by the people who live near them. So as scientists are working out Martinhenge, what do we even know about Stonehenge? Stonehenge was probably named that in Anglo-Saxon times. It's translated to roughly hanging stones, but the name has taken on a life of its own. Other archaeological features are now called henges as well. The term henge now refers to any earthwork where there's a small ditch inside or outside of an embankment. The ground the site was built on was probably a burial site, dating as far back as 3000 BCE. Over the centuries, the site went through several iterations, some of the earliest involving earthen works like long ditches, but it was consistently used as a site of cremation. According to Mike Parker Pearson, a professor of archaeology at the University of Sheffield in England, it's now clear that burials were a major component of Stonehenge in all of its main stages. Some of the oldest parts of the monument include 56 fire pits, most of which contain evidence of cremation. The ritual site we know today, stones and all, was probably erected in 2600 BCE, and work continued on the site for a millennium. The stones form concentric rings. The outer ring has huge sandstone blocks weighing up to 30 tons, and the inner ring is made up of three to five ton volcanic bluestone blocks. While the big stones are from a local quarry, it seems odd to find those smaller blue stones in the middle of a field in the middle of England. It's a bit of a mystery where they came from. For nearly a century, people thought the blue stones came from the Presley Hills in Wales, nearly 155 miles away. But a 2013 study published in the Journal of Archaeological Science found that the stones were from Carn Godog in Pembrokeshire, a few miles away from the Presley Hills. And some researchers think these stones were the real draw for the prehistoric people visiting the site, not the large ones we seem to be in awe of. Perhaps the blue stones were thought to have healing powers. But how did they get there? No one really knows. Why don't they know? One hypothesis suggests that maybe they came there by the way of Glacier. Another idea includes massive amounts of manpower in a little float down a river. As for what actually went on at the site, well, we might never know. It does seem like it was part of a large ritual landscape where a long procession might have taken place. Near the site lies Stonehenge Circus, or the Greater Circus, a two-mile track of ditches. They're angled with the sun, and they have pits that line up during the midsummer solstice. So it seems the whole thing had some ritual purpose, something to do with the sun, as well as being a place of burial. The rituals performed during the solstice might have been grand processions with people walking for miles as part of an elaborate ceremony. There's a series of graves near the site, and they seem to be aligned in a way that tracks the movements of the sun on the solstice. So the participants of the ritual might have walked around the site to each of those burial mounds. But that's just one idea. Other researchers believe the stone site was erected as a monument to the unification of people from what we call Britain. Just the hauling and shaping of the stones alone would have been an act of unification because it was such a huge undertaking that everybody had to pitch it. The building also coincided with a time when a similar culture spread throughout the island. Houses and tools started to look the same and made from the same materials. So no matter what the story, it's clear that Stonehenge was part of a constantly changing sacred landscape that remained significant for thousands of years. Will the site ever reveal its mysteries? Probably not, but that won't stop us from wondering and searching for answers. All right, conspiracy theorists, it's your turn. What do you think Stonehenge was for? Let us know down in the comments below. Keep coming back to D News. We've got new episodes every day of the week.